It isn't fair, George. It just isn't fair. I mean, why can't it be like the old days? You and I used to have such good times together. We used to have fun. I... I don't like the way it is now, George. It scares me. I don't get laughs now, George, not anymore. Not since you've been gone. But I think a lot. Oh, well, yes, I do that all right. George. George, can you hear me? I want to tell you something. At night, I often lie awake thinking about you. Yes, even after all these years. I think about the nights when it was just you and me. It's as though I can almost feel your warm flesh pressing up against mine. Oh, God, George, how I miss you. No one ever made love like you. They wouldn't know how. But let me tell you, despite what happened, despite everything that happened between us, I've never stopped loving you, never. <gasps> the lights, no, no, George. Please don't turn off the lights. <gasps> you know how I hate the dark. Please, don't leave me alone in the dark. George. You... here? You... really? Here? George! Jesus. Don't tell me anybody's ever actually slept here. It looks more like a church. We call it the chapel. It was my daughter's idea, on account of the high ceiling and sloping walls. What do you think of the stained glass windows up there? Real creepy, huh? <laughs> if you say so. I tell you, I can't bear this room. Oh, it's cold as hell up here at this time of year. George absolutely refused to install central heating. So typical of you English. How right you are, madam. Mind you, I never come up here myself. Oh, no. All those stairs would be the death of me. I have bad arthritis in my knees, you know. Oh, really? I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, not that I complain. No one can ever say I'm a burden on my daughter. I just go on in my own harmless way, waiting for the time when the good Lord calls me. Calls you? Calls you what? It's a figure of speech, young man. Oh, I see. And don't bother to ask me why the window's been bricked up, because I don't know. My daughter had it done soon after... Well, soon after my son-in-law's death. Yeah, it's a pity. It makes the room so dark with only the one window in the ceiling. Where does this lead to, behind the curtain? That's an old ironing room. An ironing room? What? In the attic? In the old days, all this must have been the servants' quarters. It's full of junk back there, isn't it? Seems to be. Uh, uh, Mrs. Whitman, how long have you and your daughter lived in this house? Oh, Virginia came here soon after she married, about 19 years ago. I didn't join them until much later. Would that have been before or after George Preston's execution? I hate this house. I hate all it stands for. It's cold and dark and demanding. After the trial, I begged her to settle up and, and come back home with me to Vermont. She could have had it so good there. A chance to mix with her own kind, but no. She had to stick it out to stay behind and face up to all the nasty little innuendos. Even now, after all these years, they still stare at her in the street as though she's some kind of a freak. What's wrong with that? She should take it as a compliment. A compliment? It's a whole new scene now, Mrs. Whitman. Nobody cares anymore what you do or how you do it. I care. Hey, is that a wind-up gramophone over there? I haven't seen one of those since I was a kid. Does it work? Unfortunately, yes. It was here when my son-in-law bought the house. He was very attached to it. I'm not surprised. 
There's a record on the turntable. Doesn't anybody ever dust this thing? <sighs> See me dance the poker. <laughs> Great. Mind if I play it? I'd sooner you didn't. <sighs> you know, I've never been able to understand why people get rid of old possessions. I know why you're here, young man. I mean, if somebody left me a work of art like this, I'd treasure it for the rest of my life. Did you hear what I said, Mr. Elliot? I know why Virginia brought you here. It won't do any good, you know. She's not well. She hasn't been well for a long time. Oh, poor child. She's suffered so much all these years. Did, did you know that my daughter could die at any moment? I, I beg your pardon? The doctors say that if she doesn't take things easy, she has a heart condition that could, well, do her a lot of harm. I just thank God she has enough money to take good care of her health. Not my money, you understand. Oh, no. You see, when her father died, he left everything to her. He did so love his darling little daughter. To be precise, he loved her to the tune of $500,000 in a New York bank account. Have you ever been to the United States, Mr. Elliot? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, I haven't. Oh, you should go sometime. America is a land of opportunity, you know. <laughs> so I've been told. Oh. Uh, sorry, I'm late. There's an awful lot of traffic and it's beginning to snow. It's Mr. Elliot, isn't it? Mr. Simon Elliot? Hello, Mrs. Preston. You're much younger than your picture in the magazine. Much younger? Mother, I'm sure Mr. Elliot would like a cup of tea. Would you be a dear? <sighs> Why not? That's about all mothers are good for, I suppose. Thank you, darling. There are some ginger cookies in the kitchen. I know there are. I made them. <laughs> oh, I must say, I feel a little awkward. It was good of you to come. I don't know why, but I didn't think you would. Well, is that why you weren't here to meet me? I guess you could say I was a little nervous. Of me? Naturally. Well, why naturally? Oh, come now. It's not every day I go around inviting people like you to call on me. People like me. How old are you, Simon? Well, you read the article in the color supplement. Yes, but it was a little flip. A little in awe of you, I thought. How much of it was true? Oh, about 60%. What about the other 40%? I have a vivid imagination. You may need it if you're going to help me. Who said I was going to help you, Mrs. Preston? I'm sorry I can't offer you a cigarette or anything. You see, I don't smoke. And neither do I. Good boy, Simon. Tell me, why did you take so long to answer my letter? I needed time to think about it. You thought I was some kind of freak. Crank. Could be. You still think so? Sorry. That's not a fair question. Would you like some time to look over the room? No, thanks. No, but... I don't need to look over the room, Mrs. Preston. I'd just like to ask a few questions, that's all. Could we sit down, please? Here, at the table. Why not? Sorry, there's so much dust everywhere. <sighs> we haven't used the chapel since... Well, not in a long time. Okay. So what do you want to know? Mrs. Preston, why did you write to me? You do know I'm not a professional medium. I don't want a professional medium. I'm not interested in all that crap about poltergeists and ectoplasm and paranormal phenomena. All I need is someone I can talk to, someone who's just as much an innocent victim of the things he can't understand as myself. My mother thinks I'm absolutely crazy. Are you? That's up to you to find out. 